In this tutorial, I'll be explaining viewport modes in Blender. So on the top right side of Blender's 3D viewport, there's going to be all of the viewport settings. And there are four main types of viewport modes in Blender. There is the wireframe, there is the solid, there is the material preview, and there is the rendered mode. And these different viewport modes change how you can see your 3D mesh in the viewport. So the first one is the wireframe, so I'll just click here to see the wireframe view. So the wireframe is going to show you the edges and the vertices of your mesh, but it's going to hide the faces so I can see through the mesh. Just to show you with a more complex object, I'll press shift A, I'll go down here and add a monkey head and just move the monkey head over. So you can see if I click back here on solid view, you can see the faces on the mesh, but then if I go here to wireframe, you can see through the mesh. So the wireframe viewport mode is really helpful if you want to see the geometry geometry of the mesh or if you want to do more precise modeling. Now if you select a mesh and hit the tab key to go into edit mode, you can now see that when you press the A key to select the entire mesh, you can actually see the faces. So you can see if I click right here, that's going to select a vertex because I'm on the vertex select mode in edit mode, or I can click here to go to the edge select and then I can select the edges. However, in the edit mode, you can actually see that the faces are a little bit gray. So if I click here on the face select, now I can actually select the face in wireframe, but you can still see through the faces. So one of the main reasons why you might use the wireframe is if you want to select the entire mesh and also select the parts which are on the back of the mesh. So just for an example, I'm here in edit mode in this cube, and let's say that I want to select all the vertices here on the bottom. So I can hit B for the box select, and I can click and drag and then let go, and you can see it selected these three vertices here, but because we were in solid view, it didn't actually select the vertex back here. Well, if I go into wireframe by clicking here, here, and I deselect everything, I can now hit B for the box select, and I can box select the bottom vertices and let go, and now if I go back to solid view, you can see it selected all the vertices on the bottom of the cube, and then I could move the bottom of the cube. Now on any of these viewport modes, if you click on the arrow here, it's going to show you some different settings for that viewport mode. So you can change the background color if you want to, and then there also is this x-ray, so you can turn this off if you don't actually want to be able to see the wireframe behind the object. So you could turn that off, but that would kind of defeat the purpose of the wireframe. And then there's also some different colors here, so if I choose the random one, you can now see each object has a different random color. But usually I just leave this at single. All right, so the next viewport mode is the solid view. So I'll click right here to go to solid, and this is the main one that you're going to use most of the time. So the solid view is going to show you the surface of the mesh. However, it doesn't actually show a preview of the material on the object. So if I select this monkey head, I'll click right here to the materials, I'll add a new material, and here on the base color, I'll make this one like a blue color, and also this monkey head here, I'll add another material, and this one I can just make red. So even though this has a blue material and a red material, the materials aren't actually showing up in the solid view, and that's because the solid view doesn't preview the materials, it just shows you the surface of the mesh. Now there is a cool option within the solid view, which kind of gives you a mix between the solid and the wireframe, and that is the X-ray. So if you click on this button right here, that is going to toggle the X-ray, and the shortcut key is Alt-Z. So by turning on the X-ray, it is solid, but it's kind of transparent so you can see through it. And if I hit the tab key to go into edit mode and deselect everything, again, if I click and drag for the box select, you can see that because I'm in the X-ray mode, it will select the vertices which are behind the mesh. So this is a pretty cool option if you want to mix between between the wireframe and the solid at the same time and kind of get the benefits of both at once. And then just like wireframe, when you're in the solid view, you can click on the arrow and it's going to show you a bunch of different settings. So there are some lighting settings, so you can choose between studio, matte, cap, and flat. And these options here, these are just going to help you to see the shape of the mesh better. You can click on the little spheres here, and there's a bunch of different studio lights to choose from. And this isn't going to affect how the objects look in the render, this is just going to change how the viewport looks, and so these lighting options will help you to see the shape of the object. You can also click on this button right here, and then you can change the rotation of the matte cap or the studio light, and that'll change the lighting. Now there also is matte cap right here, so if you click on this, there's going to be some different matte cap options, and you're not going to see all of these because I've actually created my own matte caps and added in my own matte caps, and if you'd like to learn how to create your own matte caps, then I do have a tutorial on how to create your own matte caps for Blender, so the link will be in the description to that tutorial if you'd like to learn how to create your own matte caps. But I've just downloaded some online and made my own and added 
add them in. And so like this one here, I like to use this for sculpting because it's pretty sharp and it also is kind of a red color, which is nice for sculpting. It kind of looks like a red clay color. Also, if you're making some sort of metallic object, just to kind of see how the material would look like if it's metal, you could change it to that one. And then there's also the flat option here. So if you just want to see like the silhouette or the shape of the object, you could change it to flat here. Now there are a few other color settings. So for instance, there's this random one, and this is gonna make each object just have a random color. So if you have a scene which has a bunch of objects, each object will be a different color, and so you can kind of tell which object is different if you have a large scene with many objects. Now there is also this material right here. So if this is set to material, you can see all the objects are gonna look white. However, if you've added a new material to the object, you can scroll down and you can open up the viewport display. And then you can change just the color for that material. So there are some options to kind of change the colors. So if you have different objects with different materials and you wanna tell which object has which material, you could change that just by changing the viewport display color and then changing this to material. And then there's also a few other settings there is the x-ray option which we talked about earlier and you can choose how much of the x-ray you want to see there also is this cool shadow option right here so you can kind of add like a fake shadow and you can also click on the gear icon and then you can drag this sphere around to change the rotation of the shadow so that's kind of cool just to add like a fake shadow there also is this cavity and this is kind of like a ambient occlusion effect so with the cavity option the creases and crevices are going to be darker and then the parts which are popping out are going to be a bit lighter you can also click on the type here and I could just change the type to both instead and then I could really turn this up so you can now see it's kind of giving us like a fake ambient occlusion effect and there's also a few other settings down here like the depth of field if you've added a depth of field in the camera all right so the next viewport mode is the material preview so I'll click here to change this to the material preview and the material preview is actually going to use blender EV which is blenders real-time rendering engine and it's going to preview the materials in real time now there's a few different settings within the material preview so if I click on the drop down here, you can see there's some different lighting options. So if you want it to use the scene world and scene lights instead of the fake lighting here, you can actually turn these on and now it's basically going to act like rendering in Blender Eevee. So if I press shift A, go down here to light, I can add like an area light and you can see it's going to use the actual lights in the 3D viewport. However, for the material preview, you're probably just wanting to preview the materials. So you want some really nice bright lighting. So if I click here on the shading, I can turn both of these off and I can instead choose between some different built-in HDRIs in Blender. So I can just change these around, like that one's a pretty nice one, it's pretty bright, so I could maybe change it to this one here. And then there's a few different options, like I can change the rotation, and I can also change the strength to make it brighter. Also, if I wanna see the background, I can change the opacity, and I can also change the blur. So if I wanted kind of a nice little ambient lighting, I could maybe turn this down, and then turn the blur up, and there's just some nice little blurred colors in the background. And so this is really nice if you wanna preview the material in real time and just have some nice fake lighting to see the materials really well. Now the last one is the rendered view. So I'm gonna click here on the rendered view and this is actually what it's going to look like when you render the image. And the rendered viewport mode is gonna use whichever rendering engine you're using. So whether you're using the Eevee rendering engine or the Cycles rendering engine, I am using Cycles. So the rendered view is very helpful when you're finishing up your scene, when you're doing the final lighting and doing the materials and you wanna see what the actual render will look like. Now if you click down here to see these options, you can see the scene lights and scene worlds are already checkmarked. However, you can turn these off and then you can choose those HDRIs that are built in a blender. However, these HDRIs won't actually show up in the render. So if I press shift A, go down here and just add a camera and just put the camera right here and then just give this a render, you can see that it's not actually going to use those built in HDRIs to render the scene. So I usually don't use this. So I'll just hit the escape key to go back out of that. So if I click right here, I usually don't use these in the rendered view. I only use them in the material preview. So now that you know about all the different viewport modes, there are a few shortcuts to quickly switch between them. So if you hold down the Z button, that will bring up this option here, and this is called a pie menu. So when you hold down the Z button, it'll come up. You can move your mouse to whichever one you want to go to. So rendered, solid, material preview, or wireframe, and then you can let go of the Z button. And so just hold down the Z button, move up to go to rendered, hold down the Z button, go to solid and let go. And so once you memorize these shortcuts, you can very, very quickly switch between all the viewport modes just by holding down the Z button, moving your mouse, and then letting go of the Z button. There also are a few other shortcuts, like if you're in the solid view and you wanna to jump to wireframe, you can also just press Shift Z 
and that'll go to wireframe. And then also if you're in solid view and you want to use the X-ray, you can press Alt-Z and that'll just toggle the X-ray. So that is it. That is how you use the four different viewport modes in Blender. And if you'd like to learn more little tips in Blender, then definitely check out my Blender Quick Tips tutorial playlist. The link to that will be in the description. So I hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching.